dear viewers, welcome to NTV's new prime time show, Hello Excellency. This program designed for the development partners and friendly country of Bangladesh. Around 50 diplomatic missions are now in Bangladesh and more than 20 honorary consulates. We will try to know how these missions are working to build strong diplomatic tie, development cooperation and people to people contact. Today we will discuss about Denmark. Our guest, Danish ambassador to Bangladesh, Excellency Mr. Swen Oling. We have a distinguished guest in here, Mr. M. R. Osmani, former foreign secretary of Bangladesh. He will share opinion about ambassador's remarks. Shupriya Darshak, NTV Notun Ayajan, Hello Excellency Onushthani Aapnadir Shakal Ke Shagato. E Onushthani Madhu Diye, Amra Amadir Bondhu Pratim Rashtra Shumahe Shange, Bangladesh Air Kut Noitik Shampor Ke Bishlashan Janano Cheshta Korbo. আমরা আশা করব এই অনুষ্ঠানের মধ্য দিয়ে বাংলাদেশের সঙ্গে বন্ধু প্রতিম রাষ্ট্রসমূহের সঙ্গে বিদ্যমান সম্পর্কের একটি সম্যক ধারণা আপনারা লাভ করবেন আজকে আমরা ডেনমার্ক এবং বাংলাদেশের কূটনৈতিক সম্পর্ক নিয়ে আলোচনা করব উত্তর পশ্চিম ইউরোপের একটি সমৃদ্ধ রাষ্ট্র ডেনমার্ক আজকের অনুষ্ঠানের শুরুতে ডেনমার্ক সম্পর্কে নির্মিত একটি তথ্যচিত্র আমরা দেখব উত্তর পশ্চিম ইউরোপের অন্যতম সমৃদ্ধশালী দেশ ডেনমার্ক ডেনীয় ভাষায় এর সরকারি নাম কনজারিজেট ডেনমার্ক বা কিংডম অফ ডেনমার্ক ভাইকিংরা প্রায় 1100 বছর আগে ডেনীয় রাজ্য প্রতিষ্ঠা করে এটি ইউরোপের সবচেয়ে দীর্ঘস্থায়ী রাজত্বগুলোর একটি কোপেনহেগেন ডেনমার্কের রাজধানী ও বৃহত্তম শহর ঐতিহাসিক ও সাংস্কৃতিক ভাবে ডেনমার্ক স্ক্যান্ডিনেভিয়ার একটি অংশ গত কয়েক শতাব্দী ডেনমার্কের রাজারা সমগ্র নরওয়ে ও সুইডেন কিংবা এদের কিয়দংশ শাসন করেছেন তারা দ্বীপরাষ্ট্র আইসল্যান্ডও শাসন করেছেন ভৌগোলিকভাবে ডেনমার্ক উত্তরের স্ক্যান্ডিনেভীয় দেশগুলোর সাথে মহাদেশীয় ইউরোপের সেতু বন্ধন হিসেবে কাজ করে এর জনসংখ্যা ছাপ্পান্ন লক্ষেরও কিছু বেশি আর মাথাপিছু গড়ায় উনষাট হাজার মার্কিন ডলারের ওপরে ডেনমার্ক ধনী ও অত্যন্ত আধুনিক একটি রাষ্ট্র এখানকার নাগরিকেরা ইউরোপের সবচেয়ে উঁচু জীবনযাত্রার মানগুলোর একটি উপভোগ করেন ডেনীয়রা তাদের সীমিত প্রাকৃতিক সম্পদের সদ্ব্যবহারে চাতুর্য ও দক্ষতার পরিচয় দিয়েছেন এটি ইউরোপের সবচেয়ে প্রাচীন ও ব্যাপক সমাজ কল্যাণমূলক রাষ্ট্রগুলোর একটি ডেনমার্কে ইমিগ্রেশনের ব্যাপারে মানুষের উৎসাহ চোখে পড়ার মতো শিক্ষা ও গবেষণায় বিশ্বে ছাত্রছাত্রীদের অন্যতম সবচেয়ে আকর্ষণীয় দেশ ডেনমার্ক উনিশশো বাহাত্তর সালে বাংলাদেশের সাথে কূটনৈতিক সম্পর্ক শুরু করে দেশটি মিস্টার এম আর ওসমানি আমাদের সঙ্গে এই অনুষ্ঠানে সম্পৃক্ত হবার জন্য আপনাকে সাধুবাদ জানাচ্ছি জনাব ওসমানি আপনি কেমন আছেন আল্লাহ আমাদের ভালোই আছে আমরা জনাব ওসমানির সঙ্গে আলোচনা করব তার আগে চলুন দেখে আসি ঢাকায় নিযুক্ত ডেনমার্কের মানব্য রাষ্ট্রদূত Janab Swen Oling Shate Alap Charita. Today's guest in our program, Mr. Swen Oling, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Denmark. We are very much delighted that Ambassador's whole family is with us. First, I'll introduce his wife and their three kids, Ingrid, Austin, and Espion. Hello, Excellence. How are you today? I'm very fine, thank you. For the last two years, you have been serving as ambassador. Previously, you served Washington, Berlin, New York, and many other places. What are the differences you find in Bangladesh compared to your diplomatic experience in other countries? It's, it's very different. This is uh, my first posting and my family's first posting in Asia. It's also our first posting in a uh, developing nation. But I'm a little bit surprised also with that because uh, when I was uh, told, I was uh, told uh, congratulations, we're making you ambassador. I said, thank you very much. Next question, where are you sending me? And they said, well, uh, we're sending you to Dhaka. And at that point, I mistakenly said, uh, uh, but sir, I don't know much about development assistance. It's not a, 
uh, uh, the central uh, field of my career so far. But of course, I have learned now that it's so much more. We have a long tradition of supporting Bangladesh. It's in the endeavor of the country to reach middle income status. And it, we see the light at the end of the tunnel now. But it's also commercial cooperation. It's also political cooperation. And these are areas that I really like to dig deep into. As ambassador, how do you look at the 40 years long bilateral relationship between the two countries? Well, we've been friends uh, all along, I have to say that I'm, I'm proud as a, as a, as a Dane, as a, the Danish ambassador of the fact that Denmark was among the very first countries who recognized uh, Bangladesh already on February 4 in 1972. Yeah. And if you look back at that time, that wasn't that easy a decision. I, I looked in the files, in the historic files of uh, our foreign ministry and read some of the analysis of 1971 and early 1972, uh, which was very clear. They were saying the right thing to do now is to recognize this young, struggling state of Bangladesh. But there was also some fearful uh, tones in that, saying, but if we go as the first, uh, what will the reaction be from the United States, from China, from Pakistan at that time? Uh, but I'm happy to see, uh, ret in retrospect, that, uh, that the, the recognition was done early on February 4 as among the first, and that ever since we've enjoyed the very best of bilateral relations. How do you map out the plan for to further intensify the cooperation in different sectors, including trade, commerce, investment, and financial assistance between the Dhaka and Copenhagen? Well, it's an important part of what we do at, uh, at the embassy. And uh, we, uh, not so long ago, in 2010, we opened a commercial section, a commercial wing of the embassy uh, to further uh, trade relations. And uh, for, the most first, for the first time? Yeah, for, for the first time in 2010, and I have to say that it's uh, quite a remarkable success. Uh, they've, uh, they, they're able to really uh, do a lot of things and to expand their, their work. If you look at the trade figures, if you compare just two years back from 2009 to 2011, we just recently got the 2011 trade figures. I'm proud to say that our trade in both directions have doubled since 2009. So things are really looking very bright in many different areas, in garments, in, of course, in textiles. Pharmaceuticals is yeah. uh, one important shipbuilding, or the whole maritime Origin. industry, yeah. or uh, I, the IT industry as well. Mm. Did you know, for instance, that 15%, that is about one in every seven IT companies in Bangladesh, actually export to Denmark? So a lot is, is happening. A lot of the ships that are being built in Bangladesh are being sold in, in Denmark, including passenger ferries. And I'm very proud to say also that the very first ocean-going ship for export that Bangladesh built was built, uh, was sold uh, to Denmark. Our largest pharmaceutical company is they're called Novo Nordisk. And they're opening, in a, and later this year, they're opening uh, 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 an insulin factory here in, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, which I'm happy to say is producing insulin at the world-class level. Uh, oh, okay. This is not a low-class insulin, but uh, world-class insulin produced for the Bangladeshi market. Another thing which we are contemplating is a Danish company called Haldor Topsy, uh, which is contemplating with other investors uh, what could become the largest industrial investment ever in Bangladesh, which would be setting up a, a fertilizer plant, a new fertilizer plant. We call that Kafko 2. Uh, yeah. because there are already investors in Kafko in, uh, in Chittagong. Um, so I'm excited about these opportunities we're talking about here for Kafko too. We're talking about a foreign direct investment of the magnitude of around $1 billion. So it's not, uh, it's not small change anymore. So far I know Danish import from Bangladesh improved last year, as you said. Yes. Record by 43%. Yes. Is on 210 million euros. Yes. Yes. Yeah. These are very uh, positive figures, especially the growth, how, how fast it is, uh, is, is growing. Well, we're very surprised. Bangladesh is a different country than we thought. It's a much more dynamic and interesting country for us than we thought. But secondly, which is the most important thing, they're saying we like the people. The people are ambitious, they're hardworking, they're innovative, they have ideas, and we basically feel, my countrymen say, that these are people we can do business with. And when that thing is okay, when the people factor is there, that you feel you have a creative workforce here, that makes me very optimistic. Yeah, as you said, that our people is hardworking. Yes. Yeah, and Definitely. we have a very uh, skilled human resources 
uh, we are exporting our manpower in various countries. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plan to collect uh, from here any skilled manpower? Not from? much. There is a very small uh, Bangladeshi community in, uh, in Denmark. Yeah, but only 5,000, I think. Very, even fewer than that, I think, yeah. but it's much less than if you compare with, uh, with, for instance, London or Spain or France or these larger uh, European countries. But we do take students, uh, for instance, that come and study uh, in, uh, in Denmark, and there are a few people who are working there also. Uh, you'll see that Bangladesh uh, is now opening an embassy in Copenhagen. So that is the perfect way to go further, because with the uh, Bangladeshi embassy in Copenhagen, yeah. we are able to cooperate uh, closely. Now it's Sweden-based? Yes, correct. Consulate, now there's yeah. one embassy in Sweden, Sweden which covers yeah. Uh, Norway, Norway and, and Denmark, Denmark also. Denmark, yeah. Do you think the present uh, political scenario, even the socio-economic condition of Bangladesh is prevailing friendly atmosphere for uh, foreign investment, particularly Danish investment? Well, there are definitely things uh, that we would like to see a little different, but on the whole, I would say, uh, especially if you look at uh, the legal framework, things uh, look pretty much okay. There are many smaller issues here and there. The main factor can be on, uh, uh, say, an issue like repatriation of, uh, of profits. The rules are fine, but sometimes our companies run into to, uh, to bureaucracies or, or other yeah, inefficiency yeah. that makes it a little difficult for them. And of course, one thing uh, which I'm always asked about my, by my compatriots um, is about political stability. What is this? this animosity between the two big political groups, uh, what to expect from that and, and so forth. Um, so that's also in, central uh, in our mind. Climate change is a challenging issue for Bangladesh and Denmark addressing the issue globally from the front line. Yes. And so as a most vulnerable country, how Bangladesh could be compensated? Well, um, there, is, there are schemes there, uh, as a, has been uh, discussed, that uh, what we call adapt climate adaptation funding. Uh, that is for the needed preparations that a country, a vulnerable country like Bangladesh, needs to put in place. These are many different things, but it could, for instance, be cyclone shelters. That would be one example. These things uh, need financing, and a lot of us have put forward uh, that financing. Uh, one thing is that uh, often you hear uh, criticism of uh, the developed nations saying, well, you're not putting, uh, the rich countries are not putting forward everything the, uh, that was promised uh, at the summit in Copenhagen some years yeah. ago. Uh, what I always say is, well, some of us are, and we are with Bangladesh in demanding that everybody live up to their promise, uh, but some of us, are, of, of us are. Actually, the, Euro the European Union is on track to deliver uh, the promised uh, financing. What I think is important also, and what's a new thing, is what we saw at, uh, at the climate change negotiations in South Africa recently, in, COP17, it's called, in, uh, in Durban, South Africa. There was a new coalition emerging there, which was the most vulnerable countries led by Bangladesh and uh, the European Union, wanting pretty much the same thing, being pragmatic and ambitious about the climate change agenda. And what we saw in Durban was that that coalition actually worked and was able to forge a compromise in, in Durban. That's something that's pretty exciting to me also, uh, that, that you'd see this uh, alliance. And we can see that maybe this summer again in uh, Rio Plus 20. Yeah, in Brazil, yeah. In Brazil, when uh, we meet again to discuss sustainable development in Rio de Janeiro. And maybe there again we'll be able to see the most vulnerable countries led by Bangladesh teaming up with the European uh, Union to try to create results for sustainable development. Dear viewers, now we'll move forward to family spokesperson. You know, so far I know Espanio will be the family spokesperson yeah. on behalf of family, he will speak. So how do you feel here? I, I love this country, yes. 